Hi, it's Dan with EUJuicers.com, coming to you as always from our offices here in the heart of Europe. And in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little unusual or a little different, certainly new for me. You know, at the end of our videos, I always say, uh, leave a comment, questions uh, below, or if you have any videos you'd like to see, let us know. Well, we got a customer request. I got an email last week from one of our partners. A few customers had contacted him. So I get this kind of strange cryptic email and it said, hey Dan, can you make a video showing how to make briar jam? Now, first of all, I've only made jam a few times and then briar jam, I had no idea what that was. It you know, sounded like something from Hogwarts. Like, what am I, a wizard? Briar jam? So I did a little searching and it turns out there's something called sweet briar that I wasn't aware of and it's a form of wild rose. And what these customers wanted was a video showing how to make rose hip jam. So that's what I'm going to try here using a sauna 707 horizontal juicer and a Vitamix bringing out the big guns here to process this thing. Now rose hips, just talking a little bit about them, they're the fruit of the rose. They're related to the apple. My mom used to grow roses. She'd always pick them off because then you get more flowers. But if you don't pick off the little, these little pods afterwards, they'll grow into a kind of a crab apple size fruit. And they're super high in vitamin C. They've got some antioxidant qualities to them. And I know some people like to dry them and make tea. And I've never seen rosehip jam, but apparently it's possible and I'm gonna try it out. Now, these were picked um, by one of my colleagues actually this weekend. As we're filming, this is mid-November. That's kind of late where we are. You typically want to pick rose hips right around, I don't know, mid-fall. They say right around the first frost, and that's when they'll be the sweetest. If you wait too long, they get kind of shriveled up. Um, they get, I've, I've got some down here that look kind of, kind of weak. And if you pick them too soon, they might be bigger and plumper looking, but they won't be so sweet. So there's a fine line depending on what climate you're in where you they say right around that first frost is where they should be best. So we're a little late. Ideally, these would have been picked about a month ago in mid-October here. So let me tell you what the process is. Basically, the challenge with rose hips is what's inside. Now, first of all, what you have to do, they've got these black little tips, these kind of star-shaped things. You want to pick those off first of all. Next. The big challenge is if I open one up here, there's all these seeds inside. Now you think, hey, they're related to apples. What's the big deal? Well, these are nothing like apple seeds. This is the big leagues. These seeds are like rocks. They're like teeth. They're so hard. And we actually tried the other day, I was testing it, and I tried running these rose hips through the uh, homogenizing screen, thinking, hey, it'll crush these seeds. This will be perfect. It actually started to crack the homo homogenizing screen because there's a, a lot of pressure. Something's got to give. And again, these things are solid as rocks. It was almost like putting rocks in there. It actually worked, but I wouldn't recommend it. So what I'm going to do here today is bring out the big Vitamix. And this is going to be, a, I guess, a three-step process. The first thing I want to do is break up rose hips. You see, the traditional way to make rose hip jam is really time consuming. There's two ways, really. First one is you open these up and by hand you pick out each seed. Now, there's probably 25 seeds in one of these. So, and you're talking, you know, hundreds of rose hips. You're gonna be there all day. The other method a lot of people do is they'll cook these. They'll boil them for half an hour to an hour and then they'll mash them up into sort of a paste Put that into a cheesecloth bag and just let it slowly drip. Let the sort of juices or fluids from there drip out. Again, pretty time consuming. I'm trying to do a, a faster way here. So the steps I'll do first of all is I'm going to put the rose hips in the blender with some water and run it enough to try to break up those hard seeds so I don't have such uh, big chunks but real small finer particles. And that will give me kind of a paste or a mash, then I'm just going to juice it. It's a bit like making almond milk. You know, almond milk, you uh, mix together in a blank screen. Here I'll be doing it there. And then you actually juice it. You separate the dry parts from the wet parts. 
So this is a two-step process. That's what I'm going to do. And then from there, it's just like making jam. I should be left with some rosehip juice in here when I'm done. I'll throw in an apple, part of a lemon, mix it with some sugar, cook it for, I don't know, however long it takes, probably five minutes, because I'll use jam sugar with the pectin already. And that should do it. So I'm going to start right now. I'm going to put these rose hips in the blender. These have all had those pieces broken off the edge, and I've also washed them several times. You want to make sure the rose hips are very clean. And just so you know, I'm going to try about a, I think a one-to-one -one water to rose hip ratio. I have half a kilo of rose hips in there, 500 grams. I weighed them out. Oh, look at that. Water everywhere. <laughs> That's why we invented towels, huh? So, yeah, that should be enough. Just about to the top of the rose hips there. And it doesn't matter because the juice is going to strain this all out. So hopefully that's ground finely enough. What I'm doing, I'm watching while I'm blending and I can see the seeds in there. They're starting out, you know, fairly big and eventually I see them turning into small little particles. Even medium size could be dangerous because again, they're so solid. So I've got my puree basically here. And again, this is rose hips and water, full rose hips with those little tips taken off. What I'm gonna do now, is feed this into the 707. Inside I have the coarse juicing screen that will provide the least pressure. And if everything goes as planned, I'll get dry pulp here and a thick, it'll take a while, it might even back up, I'll have to go slowly, but a thick, almost syrupy juice because the fibers in the rose hips are, and especially when you break up those seeds, are absorbing the water. I might need to even add a little more water. So here I go with this. Hopefully this will go well. So this is pretty thick. Yeah, I see. I'm gonna have to add a little water already. Because it's gotta be pourable, you know. Let's see if that goes any better. Now you hear that sound, those are the seeds grinding in there, even though they're tiny little particles. But can you imagine when they were full-size seeds, it was, again, like trying to juice rocks. I definitely want to take this slowly. I don't want to overload the juicer. You can see it's so thick, you know, puree-like. And, and even coming out, it's like ketchup almost because it's absorbed a lot liquid. In fact, I'm gonna add the rest, or at least more of this water. What I wanna do right now, I wanna mix in the apple and lemon. Now what that's going to do is add a little pectin. It's going to add a little flavor, a little juiciness to it, a little pectin, even though the sugar I'm using is jam sugar, so hopefully it won't be too much pectin, but uh, rose hips are pretty low in it. And it's interesting too, when you see this, this pulp, this is just the seeds, those hairs, and the skin all ground up. Basically what the machine's doing is separating liquid parts from all of those parts that you don't want. And so far it's doing well, you know, the Vitamix ground them up finely enough that it's not causing any problems.
So that, what was it, 500 grams made quite a bit of juicy goodness here. Put this here to catch anything. Yeah, I got about a liter going on there. Mix it up a bit. And after I'm done mixing, I'm going to get a hot plate out, put in some sugar, try cooking it and see what happens. So I'm all set up. What I'm going to do now is just cook this stuff. I'll add the sugar to it. Let's see if I can do it without spilling it everywhere. Yeah. Now, I'm not so used to jam sugar, but I've been told by a reliable source that it should only take three to five minutes of cooking. So I will start this, stir in the sugar, and I'm using a two to one juice to sugar ratio. I've seen some people go as high as one to one. That sounds awfully sweet, so I'd rather start lower and add sugar later if I need to. So I've cooked this about five minutes. I hope that means it's done. It's getting that glossy finish. <clears throat> that usually kind of indicates indicates it. So I've got a lot here. I'll put some in a jar and I'm going to try it out just a bit. That's pretty good. I've never had rose hip. It's sweet. It's flowery, like a bit like hibiscus or something. So that's it. Um, seemed to work pretty well. Using that Vitamix and that horizontal juicer combined was a good way, a lot faster way to separate all those seeds, all that pulpy part from the liquid part. And this actually looks really smooth, kind of silky. So I hope you like this video. Like I said before, leave comments below. Or if you've got some video ideas you'd like to see, please leave them there. We certainly consider every idea sent to us. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan with eujuicers.com. I'll see you next time.